Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and happy turkey day. So in today's video, I'll be solving the centroid of a turkey. So let's dive in. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we want to find the centroid of this turkey. Now, the thing is, this turkey is a little bit too complicated and also it is not something that you're going to have on your FE exam. So we can go ahead and simplify it. So let's see, if we do that, we're going to get this. Now, this doesn't really simplify it. It just removes the colors. The turkey is so complicated, so we can simplify it one more time. And then if we do that, we're going to get this. So now we can find the centroid of this turkey about the y-axis. So to solve for this problem, what you guys need to do is grab the equations from the reference handbook and their statics. You have the equation for the centroid about the y-axis. And then also at the end of the static section, there are tables for the centroid of different shapes, right? And that's going to help you to find the centroid of this shape. Now, here, what you guys always need to remember is that when you are trying to find the centroid of each shape, make sure that you guys reference it back to the origin, okay? Now, with that information, why don't you guys give this problem a try, and I will see you in a little bit. Now, when you guys are preparing for your FE exam, make sure that you guys are having fun and enjoying the process, right? It's not only about that final destination, it's also about the journey. And when we are enjoying what we're doing and enjoying learning, we'll we process information better, we'll have lasting motivation, we'll have less stress, and, and we'll do better on our exam, and then you guys will pass your FE exam. So don't forget to enjoy the process and, and have fun, right? Now, I know you, you might be thinking, you know, we're not going to have this problem on the FE exam, finding the centroid of a turkey, but we are going to go through so many concepts here. And if you are able to understand it, and if you are able to find the centroid of this turkey, you can find the centroid of any shape, all right? So let's get right into it. Now, if you guys go to the reference handbook, here we are giving the equation for the centroid of the area. We want to find the centroid about the y-axis, so we're going to use this equation here. So we're going to do the sum of yn. So yn is the centroid of each shape, but then also reference it back to the origin, right? And I'll show you guys what I mean by that in a little bit. Then we'll multiply it by the area of each shape, and then we divide it by the total areas. So let's write the equation down and start plugging the numbers. Let's first start with the circle. So we're going to do the area of the circle, which is going to be pi times 4 squared. Now it's 4 here because the radius is 4, right? Because we were giving the diameter. So the radius is just going to be 8 over 2. And then we're going to multiply it by the centroid of the circle. The centroid of the circle is going to be somewhere here. So it's going to be the distance from here to the origin. And that distance is 4, right? So we're just going to multiply it here by 4. Now let's add the rectangle. So we're going to do the area of the rectangle, which is just b times h. Now b is giving to us as 1, and then the height is 1, so we're just going to be 1 times 1. And then we're going to multiply by yn. Now yn of the rectangle is going to be 8 plus half, right? So it's going to be this whole distance. Let's go over this. So as I said earlier, when you guys are trying to find the central, you always got to make sure that you reference it back to the origin, right? Now, when we try to find y for the circle, the circle is already at the origin. There was no distance to add to it, right? However, the rectangle here, it is here, right? It is 8 inches, 8 inches away from the origin. So we got to do 8, and then we add to it plus the centroid of the rectangle, which is going to be just half of 1. So we're going to do 8 plus half, which is going to be 8.5. Now let's add this circle. Now, when we are working with this circle, we got to be careful because we have three shapes inside the circle, right? And whenever we have a shape inside the shape, we got to make sure that we subtract it. But we can only subtract those three shapes from this circle here, right? So we can't subtract it from the whole equation, all right? Something to keep in mind here. Okay, so we're going to do plus and then we're going to do the area of the circle. So that's going to be pi times r squared. Now, the radius of the circle, so the distance from here to here, that's actually 3 inches, okay? So if you guys add all these numbers, it's going to give you 3 inches. So that's the diameter. Now, if to find the radius, we're going to do 3 over 2, so that's going to give us 1.5, and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply by yn of the circle. So yn is just going to be this 
whole distance here, right? So it's going to be this distance, and then we're going to add to it plus half of the circle, right? Which is the centroid. And so that distance is going to be 8, then we have plus 1, so that's 9. And then we're going to add to it plus 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Now let's add the triangle. So it's going to be minus, right? Because we have the triangle inside the circle. The other thing I would like also to do is just add a big bracket here because everything that we're going to do from here is going to be the circle minus the three shapes, right? So we're going to do minus and then the area of the triangle, which is going to be one half times B, which is one inch, and then times the height, which is also one inch. And then we're going to multiply it by YN of the triangle, okay? So to determine the YN of the triangle, so we have this triangle here, right? Let's go to the reference handbook and take a look at the equations here. So if we go actually at the end of statics, you guys will see that we are giving equations, the centroid equations of each shape. And so we have this shape, but it's flipped, right? So what's giving to us here is that we're giving the distance from here to the centroid as h over 3, which means the distance from here to the top of the triangle is going to be 2h over 3, right? So now, if we just move this to the side, so that way, that way you guys can see it, right? So here we have it flipped, so which means that the distance from here to here, that's the distance for us from here to here right? So that's going to be h over 3, which means from here all the way to the, to the tip of the triangle is going to be 2h over 3. So let me draw it here, guys, so that way you can see what I'm talking about. So the centroid of the triangle is going to be somewhere here, right? So the distance from here to here is h over 3, as shown on the reference handbook. So which means the distance from here to here is going to be 2h over 3. Okay, now that we know the centroid of the triangle, we still got to add to it the distance from the triangle all the way to the origin, right? Because remember, we have to reference every shape to the origin, okay? Zero, zero. And so that distance is going to be 9.25. So let's take a look at it together. So it's going to be the distance, so from here, so here, right here, so it's, it's going to be, that's 0.25 and then all the way to the origin, right? So that's 0.25 plus 1 plus 8, right? So that's going to give us 9.25, and then we're going to add to it plus the centroid of the tri triangle, which we said is going to be 2h over 3. Now let's subtract the two circles, okay? So for the circles, it's going to be pi times the radius squared, right? Now r squared here is giving as, so we are giving the diameter, which is 0 0.5, the radius is just going to be half of that, right? So we're going to do pi times 0 0.25, and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply it by yn, okay? Now yn, again, we have to reference it back to the datum, right? So the circle, let's just say the circle starts here, so it's going to be this whole distance, wait, right? So this distance is only to reference it back to the origin, and then we're going to add to it half of the circle, which we said it was 0.25, okay? Now, this distance here, it's going to be 10.5. So we have 8 plus 1, and then plus 0.25 plus 1 plus 0.25. If you guys add all those numbers, it's going to give you 10. So we're going to do 10.5 and then plus 0.25, okay? All right? Now, the thing is, guys, so we this is for one circle, right? But we have two circles, and they're at the same distance, right? So all we can do here, we could either rewrite the same thing that we did here, right? Because like if we take a look at this circle here, it's, it's the same exact thing as this circle. So what we could do is just take this and then just multiply it by 2 because we have two of them. Now let's divide this by the total area. So the first area we're going to have is pi 4 squared, right? So that's the area of this circle. Then we're going to have plus the area of the rectangle, which is just 1 times 1. Then we're going to do plus and then let's do the big bracket here as well. So we're going to have pi and then times 1.5 squared. That's for the top circle. And then we're going to do minus. Remember, guys, if you do minus here, you got to do the same thing at the bottom, okay? Very important to remember that. Then we're going to do the area of the triangle, which is 1 half times 1 times 1, right? 
and then minus the two circles so there's just the two and then times the area which is pi times 0.25 and then this term here is squared okay now if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator you're going to get 4.8 Okay, now if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be B. If you are trying to pass your FE exam in the next three or four months and you're not sure how to do it or you're losing motivation and you're feeling stressed about it, make sure to check out our courses. You know, in our courses, I go over a lot of concepts and I also walk you through every single step of the solution for over a thousand problems. You know, when it comes to passing the FE, it's very important that you understand the steps and you understand the concepts. And that's something that I really focus on in our courses. Uh, we also simplify the whole journey and we make it more fun and enjoyable for you and every week on Saturdays you get to meet with me and other students as well where we do engineering problems sometimes I share study tips on how you can study smarter so that you can pass your FE exam faster and then sometimes we also invite our students that pass the FE exam and they get to join us and then they share their FE experience so if you are feeling lost right now I highly recommend that you check out our courses. All our courses are on sale right now and they're going to really help you pass your FE exam in the next three or four months. If you're not sure if we are the right fit for you, go ahead and check out the reviews. We have helped so many of our students that pass the FE exam no matter their background. Now, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching and happy Turkey Day and I will see you on the next video. A la prochaine! Oh yeah,